Hey everyone, this is an update video to the Honey Badger slash Sugar Weasel uh, clone build, I guess. Um, a while back I posted some videos, um, some unboxing videos of some of the Q Honey Badger components and um, it's it's finally done. So I've surprisingly gotten a lot of, lot of questions about it. People were asking, you know, what parts, where's the build update? So uh, I guess by kind of popular demand, here's, a, here's just a little update video. So of course, starting from tip to butt, uh, we got the dead air micro key break up here. I know it's a, it's a heavy suppressor system and the whole point of like the honey badger is kind of lightweight, but I already have a Sam NS, so this will pair perfectly with that. So right underneath the micro brake, we have a gold ring over here. A lot of people have been asking me questions about what this is. Um, so this is called the Q taper adapter, and it's specifically for this uh, 300 blackout barrel made by Q. There's a little taper right under the barrel, and in order to use regular flush uh, suppressor mounts or you know flash hiders and stuff, you need to put this uh, uh, taper adapter in order for you to properly torque down your muzzle device. Following this, we have the Q Honey Badger barrel, which is a seven inch, one and five twist uh, barrel chambered at 300 blackout. It's got their gas block system right here. Super cool. Um, around this barrel, we have the Q six inch handguard. Uh, this is the Honey Badger handguard, which just mounts to re really any regular uh, M4 style upper receiver. Um, I guess if we're talking up here, we have the BCM vertical angled foregrip. Um, and we have a Surefire Scout Light Pro over here. So next up, we got the receiver set over here. Uh, so what these are, this is an Aero Precision M4 E1 upper without the forward assist and the M4 E1 lower receiver. Now I already know a bunch of people are gonna ask how I got it to look like this, how I got it to kind of match the Q Honey Badger color. Uh, so I sent off regular these M4 E1 receivers to Vegas Metal Finishing. They were already finished in black, anodized, and Vegas Metal Finishing was able to strip off the old uh, black anodization and color match it to Q's color right here. So uh, I'm really happy the way this turned out. I think the color is awesome. It looks pretty close to the Q stuff. So I'm super happy with that. Uh, next up we have the, I know people will ask, this is the Strike Industries dust cover. Uh, it's the polymer one. Uh, this is in the old versions of the uh, Q stuff. So uh, I like the way it looked, so I, I matched it. Uh, next up we have a Strike Industries mag release. And then we have, I think just a CMMG like lower parts kit that came with the springs and the ball catch and all that stuff. Um, moving on, we have the Geisley SSP, the single, the single stage precision trigger. Great trigger, I have it in my, uh, in my 10.3 AR-15 and I love it. Uh, moving on, we have the Q Radian safety selectors. So this is the 70 degree throw right here the ambidextrous, um, it's the, you know, Q finish, so it's kind of that gray tungsten color, um, which is cool. Next up, we have the Q, uh, the Q radiant charging handle, and this is basically just like the low profile uh, radiant charging handle that has the Q logo, and it's also finished in that same uh, clear anodized color. Got the Magpul, Magpul K2 grip right here. Nice rubberized grip, I love the feel of it. And then moving on to the very end, we have the Q uh, Honey Badger pistol brace. So this is the one that SB Tactical sells and uh, you can see the logo right there. It's got the same color and finish and it just fits up right to a regular uh, M4 uh, lower receiver. Optic setup for this is just a Trigicon MRO. It is the green dot version, which I really like. The green MROs for some reason don't really have that blue tint, so 
I can't complain. I love the MRO. So this is pretty much it. This is kind of an overview of the parts and, and what it looks like. I absolutely love it. I have yet to shoot it. So let's go take it to the range. All right, so we're over here at the range, and as you guys just saw, we have a lineup of some different types of ammo. Uh, at the top, we had a bucket of some Gorilla ammunition, 215 grain subsonics, which actually we didn't even end up uh, shooting, primarily because it's super expensive. And also, we're at an indoor range, and I wasn't shooting all of it suppressed, which, yes, we will be shooting some of this suppressed. I didn't really want to burn through all that ammo, so we just primarily shot that Winchester 200 grain subsonic and some of the 125 grain SIG supersonics, just to see how it could handle the supersonics. The gun was functioning absolutely perfectly, minus the exception of uh, when shooting subsonic, and shooting the very last round, the bolt wouldn't hold open. Uh, so in a little bit, you'll actually see me busting out the Allen wrenches to adjust that gas block a little bit. Um, ended up adjusting the gas perfectly so that with subsonics on the very last round, the bolt would hold open, which is exactly how I want it. I want it to be super reliable, even unsuppressed, even with subsonic. That may change in the future, but for now, that's how it was. So here we have my rugged obsidian 45 along with a 5 8 by 24 direct thread adapter which you saw me just screwing onto the barrel there uh, i wanted to see how it would handle um, some subsonic 300 blackout and it's a perfect opportunity to you know shoot suppressed for this gun so i'll just be quiet for this part so you guys can hear what it sounds like So not a whole lot of footage of shooting suppressed, but it was a ton of fun. I definitely will be shooting it more in the future. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and stay tuned for any future videos. Thank you.